Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost. Today we're going to be talking about add-ons. This guide is going to cover all of the add-ons that I highly recommend, as well as how to install them. I'm going to go ahead and put the section on how to install add-ons at the end. That way, all the people that already know how to install them don't have to watch that. If you need to know how to install add-ons, go ahead and skip to the end before watching the part of the beginning. I'll go ahead and put a timestamp in the description down below for you. As far as what order to go through these add-ons in, well, I'm going to be talking about 20 or so. I'm just basically going to go through this list in more or less an alphabetical order. These are the add-ons I use every single day. I have dozens more add-ons for very niche situations, but these are the ones I highly recommend to every single player. Whether you're a healer, a tank, a DPS, these are going to come in handy for you. All right, the first add-on I'm going to recommend is Auto Recharge. Auto Recharge is going to automatically recharge your weapons when the enchant runs out, and it's automatically gonna repair your gear before it breaks. So if you've ever been playing any game or ESO, and you've realized that your gear broke halfway through a fight, and now you need to try to go into your menu options or go into your inventory and repair that gear, well, now you don't have to worry about that anymore. If the repairing your armored minigame is kind of boring to you, then get this add-on, and you can set a minimum threshold for gear to be automatically recharged and repaired. I've got mine at 15%. So anytime a piece of gear gets down to around 15%, it's going to automatically repair it. This way, it does not have to do it while I'm in combat because um, you can get problems while trying to have an add-on repair your gear in combat. So I just don't. I just have mine repair anytime I get to about 15%. So the first time I come out of combat after hitting 15%, it will automatically repair any pieces of gear that have fallen below 15% after that battle. This works great. Now, all I have to do is buy a bunch of repair kits, which costs next to nothing. Keep them in my inventory. I usually grab a couple hundred at a time and now I don't have to worry about checking my gear constantly to make sure that it's not going to break on me. All right the next add-on I'm going to recommend is called Wizard's Wardrobe. The first thing you're going to want to do after you install Wizard's Wardrobe is go to your settings, go to controls, go to add-on keybinds, go to Wizard's Wardrobe and bind a key to open it up. This way you can open it on the fly whenever you want to. All right. And then once you have done that, what you can do is at any time you can add a build in here. This is a build loadout manager. So you can have different builds for different things in here. Maybe you have a bow build or maybe you have a two hand build or maybe you have a solo build and a group build. That's pretty common or a PVP build and a PVE build, right? You can have multiple different loadouts. One reason that this add on is really useful, even if you have something like the armory and you have access to the armory or the armory assistant is because this is actually usable in content. So you can use this in dungeons and in trials to switch between boss fight builds and trash fight builds. So you can have an AOE loadout and a single target loadout and you can switch them on the fly. And it's really easy to use. There's other add-ons that are similar, but I think Wizard's Wardrobe is now considered the best in slot build loadout manager in the game. Great alternatives and definitely worth mentioning are Alpha Gear and Dressing Room. They're both really nice. I like how Alpha Gear shows you the, I don't know, the health of all your items as well as like like if they're purple, it just does some really nice things when showing you your gear right here. Alpha gear is nice for that. And you can certainly run it on top of this one, um, but that is a bit redundant. So what you're going to do in here when you're using this add-on, you just click this to add a setup and then you just click save to save your current loadout. Boom. Now it's got my food, my gear, my skills and my CP, right? It all it saved all of that right here. And I could easily switch between this one and this one just by clicking on it anytime I want. You can also bind the first build to a hotkey and bind the second build to a hotkey. So like you just hit F1 to load the first loadout and F2 to load the second one. If you're maybe you've got an AOE setup and a, a single target setup for boss fights when you're trying to speed run content. And this one is called empty. So to change that, you just click modify, change it. And we would be like and we would just change this one to like, for instance, if this was our AOE loadout, Boom, right? And then we added a new loadout, different skills, different abilities, just pretend modify and this one would be a single target okay this add-on is really great because you can just put tons of builds in here and then you can switch through them on the fly also what it does really well and one thing that it does better than the rest if you are currently running for instance let's say sunspire right and you can save a loadout here for whenever you're fighting trash you can save a loadout for each boss lacestes you'll know uh and Naventus, right so you save your loadouts for each of these, and then you can have it automatically load the correct loadout based on which piece of content you are fighting in that trial. So you run up to Lokestis, and this add-on will automatically load out your Lokestis loadout. And when you run up to YOLO, right, it's going to pull out your YOLO loadout, right? So it's great. It's great for managing your gear and automatically making sure you have the right thing because we've all been, if you're, if you've been progging trials, you've definitely been in that situation where all of a sudden you're in the Lokestis fight, but you've 
forgot to change away from your trash loadout. And now you're fighting Lucestes with an AOE trash loadout instead. And it's it never feels good. It's something that's happened to us all. Well, this add-on just prevents you from making that mistake yourself by automatically changing your loadout for you when you roll up to certain pieces of content. If you're a casual player, you're never going to really need to worry about having specific loadouts for specific bosses. And you can ignore all that. And you can just use this general tab for maybe having a uh, solo or a group loadout or, you know, having a PVP page for all your PVP loadouts. And it's just a fantastic loadout manager. Highly recommend it. The next add-on I'm going to talk about is auto categories. This is what is sorting my inventory by sets. So we have Diamonds Victory, Damahas, Elemental Catalyst, right? Master Architect, Medusa. It's grabbing all my sets and it's putting them together so I can see which pieces of the set I have and which ones I don't. On top of that, you can minimize these tabs if you don't want to see them or you can expand them so that you can. This makes managing your inventory really easy. And if I was to run through a dungeon, it would place all the tradable items at the top so I can easily find out which items I can trade to friends or group members. It's just a really nice inventory manager. I love it. And it's called Auto Category Revised. Be sure to check it out and see if you like it because sorting through your inventory when you have 200 plus items in there is not fun. The next add-on I'm going to talk about is the one you're looking at right now, my interface. I'm using Bandit's user interface. It's what is putting my health bar like this. It also handles my group frames up in the top left, if you've ever seen those, as well as the mini map right here and placing quests below the minimap right here. A lot of people ask me, how do you have your health bar looking like that? How do you have your quests underneath the minimap? How do you have a minimap? Well, it's all Bandit's user interface, but that's not all it does. It's also going to handle my dungeon finder, right? It's going to show me which achievements I have as well as what the daily pledges are. If you're interested in knowing that Bandit's user interface is a fantastic add on if you're looking for a very powerful and very effective UI. Okay, the next add-on we're going to talk about is Beam Me Up. It's a great add-on for getting around the world of Samriel and doing it for free. All you have to do is open up your map and on the side you have this new menu here. In this menu, you can search for the zone you want to go to, whether it's Western Skyrim or Blackwood, and then you just click the shrine here and it's going to teleport to that zone. Anybody that's in your friends list or any of your guilds that's in these areas will show up automatically. This saves you the hassle of manually opening up your guild and looking for the person who's in the zone that you're trying to go to. Likewise, it saves you from doing the same in your friends list. This add-on, instead of having to search for it, you just type the place you wanna go and then teleport to that individual. Another great feature of this add-on is if you go to a zone for the first time and you've never been there before, you can teleport into the zone and then hit this button right here, unlock current zones, way shrines. And if you have any friends near this shrine up here, this shrine over here, and this shrine here, your character will automatically start teleporting to all of those and it unlocks the shrine in the process allowing you to freely teleport to those locations in the future. It's a great add-on and it tells you how much gold that has saved you. Currently, mine has saved me nearly a million gold in teleports. It should be probably double or triple that, but I'm lazy, sometimes even too lazy to bother typing the name of the zone I want to go to and dealing with a double teleport. So I pay the 333 or the 500 gold to get where I want to go. But you don't have to be that way. You can save hundreds of thousands or millions of gold with this simple add-on. Okay, the next add-on I'm going to talk about is Bug Catcher. Do you see all those bug errors popping up on my screen because half of my add-ons are out of date. Bug Catcher is going to catch those warnings and tuck them away where I don't have to look at them, deal with them, manually close them, or otherwise see them in any way. It's a great add-on. So if you log into the game and you get error messages from one of your add-ons, be sure to pick up Bug Catcher or just grab it now as a preventative measure. Okay, the next add-on I'm going to show you is Codes Combat Alerts. This is one of the best add-ons in the game and one of the most useful. This is the one that's going to keep you alive, especially when you're new and you haven't seen all of these one-shot mechanics a hundred times. There are so many enemies in this game and so many of them have one or two one-shot mechanics that until you've encountered it a dozen times, you're not going to even know it exists. So if we run through this group, let's see if we can get a couple of them to fire off their one-shot mechanics for us. Um, you'll see a bar above my head that's going to show you that the one-shot mechanic is happening. This is important because a lot of times you'll be faced away from an ad or two because, you know, they just haven't been chained in yet by your tank or you're focused on some other ad and there's the bar warning me that one of the guys behind me is about to one shot me. So if I dodge roll, you see I'm dodged that arrow that came flying in, right? That is huge. That is huge. Now, if we had failed to dodge roll at the perfect time right there, our character will die. So I'll let the next one hit me so you can see what happens. So this one, I won't dodge roll, right? I'm just going to eat this arrow boom, I die instantly. It's a one-shot mechanic. 
it's very easy not to see the signs of that one shot mechanic incoming. Now, if you're an advanced player, you've done this for a long time, you'll see it. But even still, even advanced players can easily miss it in a big group of enemies. If one of them is doing this attack and you just don't notice because you're caught up fighting a boss or something else. So that add on is codes combat alerts. I can't recommend it enough. It's going to save you so many times. Trust me, you're going to want this one. So definitely put this on your must have list. And before we jump into the next add on, I just want to take one second to thank the sponsor of today's video. Chimera Land is a free to play open world survival game with strong RPG elements, and it takes place in a prehistoric mythical world. When I say prehistoric, I mean it as you can literally run into tons of different dinosaurs in this world. In Chimera Land, you will capture pets and then have those pets devour other enemies. In doing so, your pet can gather their abilities and their appearance. Eat an animal with wings and your pet could gain wings. The character creator is incredibly unique, allowing you to choose from a variety of things I guarantee you've never used a creator to make before. You could be a human or even a jellyfish. You'll start off by building things such as a basic survival shelter after collecting some resources and eventually you'll make a mega base in outer space. The dinosaurs and pet system remind me a lot of Ark Survival Evolved. I mean, just look at this T-Rex. Cameron just added a new update called Attack of the Tyrant, which added various new dinosaurs and dinosaur eggs as well as activities such as dinosaur museums and dinosaur battles. You can play Chimera Land on PC and Android. Check out the description below for a link to download this incredibly unique game. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the add-ons. All right, the next add-on I can show you while I'm in here. It's called Combat Metronome. This is a great add-on for getting a feel for the rhythm of this game. In Elder Scrolls Online, you have a one second global cooldown. This means you can cast one ability per second. That's it. One ability per second is what you're capped out at. Now, I guess you could cast less if you go slower and that's a problem. You don't want to go slower because you're doing less damage then. You want to cast exactly one per second or as close to that as you can get. So what you do is if I press a button here, you see that bar counting down. See it there, the yellow one right above my skills. That is combat metronome. So when that bar is empty, that means I'm allowed to cast another ability. So what I do is when I press a button, I can light attack to queue up a light attack and then press the next ability, whatever that ability is going to be. You can queue up your light attack about, you know, with a third of the bar still left. So you can click your light attack and the game knows to queue that up to follow as soon as your skill is done casting. It will automatically cast that light attack. Likewise, you can queue up your light attack and the ability and your character will light attack and do the ability. So what this is going to do is help you keep a rhythm in battle until you get an internal clock made because it's hard to know when you're allowed to cast your next ability. And for new players, what they end up doing a lot of times is casting too fast. They start spamming abilities and they feel like abilities aren't firing. Well, the ability didn't go off because you were still on the global cooldown. So you pressed it too soon. Like if I press four twice in a row right now, it's only going to cast my guy once, right? He only came up once which would feel like nothing happened if I cast my orb and my wall of fire at the same time. Only the wall of fire is going to go off. I hit wall of fire orb, right? But I casted orb too soon. The global cooldown was still up and so nothing is going to fire. That's not good. We don't want that. You want to wait until you're allowed to cast. That way the ability actually goes off. This is a great add on for keeping your pacing on your parse, getting as close to one attack per second and likewise one light attack per second as possible. If everything I was just saying about light attacking and light attack weaving is going over your head, don't worry. I have an entire video on just light attack weaving and I'll throw that in the description below so you can watch that after this one. All right, next I'm going to talk about three add ons that all facilitate doing your writs every day. A lot of players do writs every day. And a lot of players do writs every day on multiple tunes. So being able to do it really fast is insanely beneficial. These add-ons are going to make it so that you basically just have to walk up to the sign, interact with it, and it's automatically going to grab all of the quests for you. Then you walk up to this bench and you just interact with it and it's automatically going to craft the items you need for your writs that day. Likewise, you go up to this bench here and it'll do those writs and you go to that bench and it's going to do those writs. Oh, son of a... Okay, now that we've got rid of our bounty, this lovely guard over here wandered up and helped me with that. Thank you, officer. So I'm going to demonstrate for you what it looks like when you're doing with your lazy Rick Crafter. You walk up to the sign. I'm just going to hit one button, but it's going to grab all the quests. 
boom there it goes and it does it so fast then i'm gonna walk up to this bench the name is red it says clothing station in red this signifies two things one is that i have a writ for the station and two it's red because i haven't done it after i complete the writ by pressing one button i just hit e my character's crafting all three of these items automatically you would normally have to go in and select all the settings and create all the right things it did it for me automatically and look the name clothing station is green this means i have done this writ i have completed all of it next we're gonna go to the blacksmith think station same thing it's red we interact with it it's gonna craft everything automatically for us and now the name of this station is going to be green amazing add-on same thing for woodworking it's gonna craft those items for us perfect okay so now that is lazy writ crafter doing that for us now the next two add-ons are going to help with something else here i interacted with this board there's two things that lazy writ crafter does not do one is food right which you come up to this cooking fire lazy writ will not make your food for you it also will not do your alchemy for you so we're going to pick up two more add-ons to do our writs for us one is daily alchemy which is going to do this right here our alchemy station so that when we interact with the alchemy station it's automatically going to craft the correct potion or poison or whatever is being asked for that day right now that name's green perfect if you don't have daily alchemy you'll walk up to the station and nothing will happen all right jewelry lazy writ crafter will go ahead and take care of jewelry for us same thing with the enchanting table and then as i mentioned when we come up to the cooking fire because we have daily provisioning our provisioning writ is going to be taken care of as well but that's not all this add-on does lazy writ is also going to do one more thing for you that you may not be aware of even if you're already using it when you come over to the turn-in station for all of your writs and you interact with these, right? You're going to get a ton of little chests full of, well, your rewards. This add-on is going to open all of these little bags for you. It's sitting here, it automatically opened them all, and then all my goods are coming in over here on the bottom right as it opens them all for me. Normally, you would have to manually go in there and open up all these little boxes, all these shipments and stuff like that. But this add-on's also doing that for you. Boom, there's a gold material for doing your writs. Okay, the next add-on we're going to discuss is my action bar right here. You may be wondering, why are you able to see your front bar and your back bar at the same time? That's because I'm using an add-on called Fancy Action Bar. It allows me to see both bars. It also shows me timers. If I cast an ability, boom, it tells me how long the ability has up and how long until I need to recast it again, right? Because as soon as an ability wears off, you need to recast it again. This is critical to doing good damage in Elder Scrolls Online, is making sure that every one of your abilities is always up at all times. As long as it's not a spammable or a bar buffer or, you know, a shield or something, you need to make sure it's always ticking. This add-on is essential to doing something like that. Another great option for this, if seeing both bars kind of trips you out and you're not sure which one you're actually on, this arrow will tell you skills will only be lit up on the bar that's active so if i swap to the back bar boom now that bar's lit up but this can be confusing on this bar right because half my skills are grayed out because they need a target so it kind of feels like i don't know what bar i'm on this can be confusing you can look for the green arrow or you know if that's still too confusing you can use a different add-on that i really love for the same purpose it's called action duration reminder it's also going to give you these nice countdown on your skills to make sure you're keeping them up but it's only going to show you the bar that's active at a time if that's something you're more used to all right the next add-on i'm going to mention is hodor reflexes this add-on tracks your group's dps and shows you how much damage your party members are doing and how much damage you're doing there are a couple of caveats to this add-on however in order for you to see your group's damage they also have to have the add-on installed and they have to have the option to share their damage turned on so if they have the add-on but they don't have um share dps turned on right here you're not going to see their dps right so if you're in a public group oftentimes people will not have this add-on and they won't have share dps on if they do have the add-on so if you go into a public group and you don't see anyone else's dps don't be alarmed they probably just don't have the add-on the only time people use this add-on is really in organized groups so that people know how well everyone's performing and so that you can take action to correct any glaring problems in someone's performance. This add-on is useful for another thing. It's sharing your ult charge, right? So that two people don't fire off an ultimate at the same time. You can share your ultimate like Warhorn. And that way, when someone else is coming close to using it, you know not to use yours and vice versa. Again, this is something that you're only going to see in organized raid groups. And so you don't need to worry about this add-on if you don't want to until your raid lead asks you to get it installed. But once you get to end game raiding, it is an essential add-on that everyone must have. Okay, the next add-on is absolutely one of my favorites and one that I couldn't live without. It is called Inventory Insight. It's this box right here that pops up whenever I open my inventory. This allows me to search the inventory of every 
part of my account. It allows me to search the inventory on this character, every single one of my alts, my bank, and all my storage coffers. It allows me to check everywhere that I have anything to see if I have an item that I'm looking for. So if I type the name of an item like Maelstrom, right? Maelstrom bow here, for example, or any of these other Maelstrom items, I can hover over it. And at the bottom there in blue text, it says Lucky Wardu has this item. And if I hover over the bow, it says the bank has this. Lucky Tempo has this, right? And so I can easily find out who has an item that I'm looking for. That way I don't have to log into every single one of my characters. I have 18 characters. That would be a nightmare. I can just use this to find the item I'm looking for, whether it's an Inferno staff or a Maelstrom bow, whatever it is, I can just search for it, log into the character that has it, and grab it real quick. This also works for materials, blueprints, motifs. I mean, literally anything in the game. It'll tell you if it's in a coffer, the bank, or one of your characters. It's an absolutely essential add-on, and it's one that I couldn't live without. Again, it's called Inventory Insight. The next add-ons I'm going to talk about are Item Set Collection Tracker and Item Set Tracker. These are two similar but different add-ons. Item Set Collection Tracker is going to help you fill out this catalog of items under sets. Anything in here that you find and bind your character, you can craft anytime you want at a later date you can go ahead and deconstruct it and then if ever that item comes into meta or you decide you want to use it you can just go to a reconstruction table and make it again without having to go farm the item and getting it to drop for you out in the wild this is a great addition to the game and it's really fun to fill this book out but also kind of difficult whenever someone shares an item in chat so that you can see if you have it or not you have to hover over the item and see if it tells you to bind it or not and it's quite a pain however if you have this add-on installed and you interact with someone if someone posts an item in chat or if you look in a guild trader and there's an item you don't have it'll put this red symbol next to it this red symbol means you don't have this on this character yet see that right there that means i don't have any of these items on this character yet so if someone in my group got one of these and they didn't need it and they offered i would take it off their hands so that i could add it to my item set collection that is the add-on that is item set collection tracker it also puts something in group chat to notify you whenever a group mate picks up an item that you don't have so that you can relieve them of it if they don't want it remember it's their loot they don't owe you anything and it's not their job to give it to you if you want it don't get upset if someone gets something that you need Need, and they're not willing to part with it. And the other add-on I mentioned is item set tracker. Now, when I hover over an item, such as the lightning staff of Sentry, down at the bottom there, you see the shoulders are green, but head, chest, hands, waist, and so on, they're red. That means I don't have any of the items in red for the set, and the one in green, I do have. If I hover over another set, we can see I have the waist, legs, and feet of this set, right? But not the head, shoulders, chest, hands, etc. So it's an easy way to see what you're missing of a set and what you already have. So if you're trying to farm a set, right? Like, for instance, uh, what's a popular set that people are farming all the time? Mother Sorrow. And we farm Mother Sorrow, right? And we hover over Mother Sorrow, we can see that we have almost everything, but we are missing the dagger, the axe, the mace, the battle axe, and the lightning staff down there. That is item set tracker. Anytime you hover over an item, it'll tell you which pieces of the set you have and which pieces of the set you don't have. With these two add-ons combined, it makes it very easy to keep track on what you're looking for, what you have, and what you need while you're speedily running through dungeons and trials. Okay, the next add-on is another one I could not live without, map pins. This add-on puts so many different things in your map. If we look at the filters list, we can turn on any one of these objectives. We can turn on delve bosses, sky shards, lore books, treasure maps, treasure chests, right? We can turn on all of these things and know their location. So I've already done the sky shards in this zone, so they automatically hide once I found them. But to show you what it looks like, I could click this button and it shows me all the sky shard locations in this zone. So if you're running around looking for sky shards and you will be, especially if you're a new player and you need skill points, right? So every third sky shard you pick up is one skill point. This add on is critical in finding these quick and effectively. Same thing with lore books. All lore books will be visible on your map. Okay, the next add-on I'm going to talk about is one I get asked about all the time in stream. It is ODY support icons all one word and what it does is it puts role icons above your allies heads this allows you to know who the tank is who the healer is and so on so you can also have it put custom icons above every person's head that you like a friend i mean you can put anything above their heads if you want i don't like a lot of clutter so all i have is the tank turned on and the healer turned on and that makes it easy to find the tank in the thick of battle. And same for the healer, right? I usually want to be in front of my healer and I want to be behind the mob that the tank is holding. If I'm nowhere near either of these guys, I'm probably out of position. It's a great add-on for keeping track of your support players in a hectic fight in any trial. 
Okay, the next add-on I'm going to talk about is, well, this might be my favorite add-on. So many of these are huge quality of life changes. However, this one is simple, it's clean, it takes the UI from a place where I don't really care for it to a place where I love it. And this add-on is called Perfect Pixel. You'll notice here that my UI takes up the entire screen. It goes from the top to the bottom. I can see all of the items and it just looks clean. It's simple, clean UI, but most importantly, it's taking up the whole screen. This over here looks clean. This looks clean. If I open up my skills and my passives, I can see all of my skills and all of my passives without having to scroll down. Likewise, I can see all of the skill lines without having to scroll down. Similarly, in my journal, I can see all of my logs without having to scroll, right? It puts everything on your screen so that you don't have to scroll. Now, if we turn Perfect Pixel off and we open up our inventory, look what we see. We can see a whopping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items at a time. I have 210 items and it's going to show me seven to 10 items at once. This is awful. Definitely get perfect pixel. That way your inventory takes up this space here. This is one of those design decisions that I don't understand. I don't know why they do it this way. It drives me absolutely nuts. I don't want to open my inventory and only see a few items at a time. I want to see as many as possible so that I can just glance through it and look for the item I want. Similarly, if we look at our skills, again, they're only using the middle portion of the screen. I don't know why they do this, but this is how they do it. And so if you want to see if you have a passive, you have to actually scroll down to see the passives on all of these skill lines. It drives me nuts. I don't know why they do it. Perfect Pixel is going to make it so that you see everything all at once. It's also got all of your quest logs opened up so you can see them all the time in Perfect Pixel. Here you can see we have to open them all up largely because it's only taking the middle part of the screen. So if these were all opened at the same time, you would have to scroll yet again. Same thing with your achievements. You have to do a ton of scrolling. Perfect Pixel lets you see all of this at one time. It just makes the UI so much better. I can't recommend Perfect Pixel enough. It's one of my favorites and it has been since the day I found it. The next add-on I couldn't live without, I'm a completionist. I play this game a little bit like I play Skyrim in some ways. I want to do all of the things. I want to do all of the side quests and it's hard to know where the side quests are without this add-on. This add-on is called Quest Map and what it's doing is it's putting these yellow exclamation points on the map. This shows me that there is a side quest that I can pick up at this location, right? These are where all of the quests are located. The main story quest is easy enough to find. All we do is hit zone guide, continue zone story and this is going to show us where the next piece of the main zone story is that's easy but nothing shows us where the side quests are except this fantastic add-on here so if we zoom out we can see them all and then as you complete them they will be removed if you ever run up to one of these yellow exclamation points and there's no npc there for you to pick up a quest it's not that the add-on's broken it's that it's a quest you have not unlocked yet maybe you have to do one of these quests over here before this guy will appear or something along those lines or maybe you have to get far enough along in the main story quest or the zone story quest before this npc shows up for you to pick the quests up this is going to show you where they will be or where they are not necessarily only what you can pick up right now and eventually you'll get it to a place where it looks like this and you have no more yellow exclamation points on your map what is this oh my god i've got to go do that right now the next add-on that i absolutely love and couldn't live without is called tamriel trade center this add-on tells you what everything you pick up is roughly worth it's not always spot on but it's very much close enough to tell you hey this is an item i should hold on to to sell or i'm definitely gonna deconstruct this because nobody wants it so if we look at my items here if i hover over these companion epaulets right it says this sells for roughly 180 to 225 gold right uh that's not worth the time it takes me to sell it i might as well just vendor this thing to a vendor and then find something much better to sell at a guild trader like say this death Deadly necklace here. What does this thing go for if I list it? 287 to 359,000 gold is what TTC is suggesting. So if I found this out in the wild somehow, uh, it's technically impossible, but we'll ignore that for the moment. If I found this item out in the wild and I hovered over it and I saw that price range, I would be like, wow, that's amazing. I'm going to sell this at a guild trader. I'm going to hold on to this item. Whereas the rest of these items, uh, we hover over them 204 gold starting selling price, 345, right? If it's less than a thousand, I don't even 
even entertain the idea of selling it on a guild trader, I just deconstruct it. This is great for picking up gear that might be worth something, or likewise, if you pick up a motif and that motif might be worth something, you're like, ah, I don't love the look of this one, but I wonder if it sells well. You just hover over it and it gives you a general price range, right? This one's 14K to 17K. This one is seven to nine. And then same with these blueprints, these practices down here, it tells me this one's worth 1200 or this one's worth 69, right? It's a great add-on Tamarail Trade Center. It saves me a ton of time of going and Googling and researching every item I find. And it gives you that peace of mind to destroy or sell or deconstruct the items that you find because you know, hey, this is clearly not worth anything. I can get rid of it. And the next add-on we're going to talk about is Ritworthy. Ritworthy is an add-on that is amazing for doing master writs. So it's an add-on you should absolutely pick up. And when you get to the point of doing master writs, you're going to live and die with this add-on. This add-on is going to automatically do the writ for you when you walk up to the relevant crafting station. And most importantly, it's going to tell you if you can even do the writ before you accept it. Because of the way master writs work, there's a chance that you could pick up a master writ and not be able to do it. Let's see if I can find one that I can't do. And if it's okay, here we go. There it is. So the sealed jewelry writ, it says you can't do this because you don't have the chromium plating to do so. If I go down further, it says I'm missing a dawn prism to do this jewelry crafting writ, right? Or if I didn't know the motif and I couldn't craft it, it would let me know, hey, you're missing this motif. You can't do this writ, which is very important because you cannot pick up another master writ until you've completed the one you accepted. So the last thing you want to do is accidentally accept a very valuable master writ, right? Because some of these are worth... Um, thousands and thousands of gold. And so you don't want to get caught in a position where you have to abandon something that's worth 20, 30 or 40,000 gold because you're unable to finish it at the moment. Ritworthy is also going to tell you if it's worth doing it financially or not. The value of master writs is basically determined by how much it's costing you per writ voucher. So you divide the total cost in materials to make the item. And depending on what it is, it could be 500 gold per writ voucher, or it could be 50,000 gold per writ voucher. It just depends. And you never want to do one that is scaled so horribly. So for example, this right here, it says it's going to cost 1 million gold in materials to complete this writ voucher. That's the add on telling me that that's a big red flag. You don't ever want to do a gold jewelry crafting writ. It says per voucher, this is going to cost 1,531 gold. That is awful 1500 you can get as low as three four hundred per voucher so this is horrible value this is one of the reasons you almost never do jewelry crafting writs so it's a great example of what not to do this add-on is giving me all the information down there in the bottom half so that i can make a quick educated decision on a writ voucher on a master writ to know if i want or don't want to do it and it's going to do it for me automatically when i do pick one up and go to the crafting station and do it. All right, last of all, let's talk about how to install Minion. As promised, what we're going to do is go to minion.gg. I've got an entire guide on how to install Minion over here at eso.justloot.com. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video down below, but I'll walk you through it here as well. So we're going to click download program. We're going to go to minion.gg. Click the download button. Then you're going to install Minion. Once you have installed Minion, this application will open up. Go ahead and close it. Make sure you close it all the way. Make sure it's not down here in your task tray. Go ahead and exit it down here as well. Make sure that it's closed everywhere. You can control, delete it, whatever you want to do, and then boot it up again. For whatever reason, the very first time you open Minion, it does oftentimes have a hard time doing the next step. So close it down all the way. Make sure it's not in the task tray. Start over. Open it up again. Now this time hit add game then click this button right here and it's going to pop up asking you where you want it to go you're going to choose your pc documents elder scrolls online live add-ons and then click select folder boom you've now linked minion with your add-ons folder then the next thing you're going to do is click find more add-ons then search for the add-ons i recommended like perfect pixel there you go. It comes right up and you're just going to click install. Once you click install on an add on and then click on the installed folder, right? We were in find more looking for the add on. Then we go to installed and the add ons we've installed will be here. So once you've installed your add ons, go ahead and go into game, press escape, click on add ons. This is going to show you your list of add ons that you have installed. Any name that is red means you're missing something. So click this arrow right here and it tells you which file is missing. 
In this case, it's Master Merchant. So in order to use this one, I would have to download Master Merchant. Oftentimes, what's missing is going to be a library file or a lib file, lib notification in this case. So if I were to open up Minion, find more, and then type lib notification, right? Install. Now, if we reload the game by typing slash RL for reload UI, that was the add-on called no thank you. It was missing lib notifications and it was in red. Okay, we've successfully reloaded our UI. So let's go ahead and check our add-ons. And we scroll down to the add-on called no thank you. And right here you can see the name is no longer red. The lib file lib notification is no longer missing. This add-on is now functioning 100%. So go ahead and after you install all of the add-ons I suggest or the ones you want to use, check in here for any that are red and grab the files that are missing. Once you've installed those, that name will no longer be red and the add-on will be working. There's one other problem you might run into. If you press escape and click add-ons and there's nothing in this place at all, it's just empty. Well, that means you've installed your add-ons to the wrong location. You're going to have to open up Minion and direct it to the correct location. Typically, it's where I suggested. However, if you've got your game installed on a separate hard drive or in some abnormal location, then you might have to direct it to that add-ons folder manually. And that's all there is to it. They're pretty straightforward. It's very simple to use Minion. I highly recommend using Minion. If you're going to have add-ons, the main reason I recommend using Minion is not only because how easy it is to use, but the biggest thing is every single patch, all of our add-ons get updated by these add-on makers. And when that happens, it is a hassle to download and install all of these zip files manually by yourself without Minion, right? You, then you have to unpack them, put them in the right place, one at a time, all of the updates. Or if you have Minion, you just click this button right here, update all, and all of your add-ons will automatically update for the new patch, right? And we've got a lot of add-ons. I've got a ton here. A lot of them I didn't recommend to you guys because they're very situational, they're very niche. I recommended to you all the ones you must have and the rest of them you'll find and discover as you play. All right guys, and that concludes my updated add-ons video. I've removed a few from the old video and I've added some new ones and then I've kept a lot of the ones that I used to use. These are the add-ons that I live and die with. These are the add-ons I use every single day. I love these add-ons and if I was stranded on a desert island, kind of like I am, these are the ones I would want to take with me. I hope you have a fantastic day, night or evening, wherever you might be. Please don't forget to sub and like the video if you enjoy this content and you want to see more Elder Scrolls Online content in the future. This is Lucky Ghost, and I'll see you in the next video.